Can you save taxes when you transfer property in Thailand? What about under-declaring the value of your property? Does it work? How much can you save? What are the risks? Watch this video and we'll find out. Hi, I'm Joe Remax coming to you from my office here in Bangkok, Thailand. What I want to cover today is are there creative ways that we can minimize our tax because it's quite common for people here to manage their taxes in creative ways and you may be told that oh you can save money so what I want to do today is kind of maybe bust some myths about exactly how beneficial this practice is and whether it's something that you want to consider or not. So we're recording my screen today. We'll have a look at the computer. I'll walk you through some points. Under declaring, is it worth it? How much will you save and what are the risks? That's what we want to cover today. So often we, when we think of tax as one number. In actuality, there's a number of factors that affect your taxes and we have to look at those to understand really what the impact can be and what, where you can find the benefits. First, we're going to understand the tax structure. Things that can affect your tax that you pay would be the selling price of your property, the assessed value by the government, the land department, how long you've owned that property, and whether or not it's your primary residence. These are some factors that impact exactly how much tax you're going to pay. It's not just one tax. There are a series of taxes get applied along with each other and sometimes one and not another. So let's jump into it. What are the taxes that and will be charged? So when you go to transfer a property, there's a 2% tra land transfer fee, and this is fixed. It won't change. There's a stamp duty of half a percent, 0.5% that applies to the transaction. There's a business tax that can apply under certain conditions, which is 3.3%. And there's withholding tax, which is a lot like personal tax in a structure that is much like uh, income tax, where you say this block is taxed at this rate, the next block is taxed at another rate, the next block is taxed. Well, that's the way this works. So it's, there's no one easy answer to people say, what's my withholding tax? Now that we know that there are four possible taxes, what, what is the base for those taxes? What amount of money is that applied to? And there's two different values that the land department officials will look at. One is the assessed value of the property, which you have no control over. They set that and the sale price. So the land office assessed value, it can be a third, it can be a half, it can be two thirds, depending when it was last assessed, but typically much lower than your sale or market value. Each of the taxes that we talked about, which tax base which value do they use? Do they use a selling price or do they use the assessed price? And the answer is, it's a mix. So let's take a deeper look at this. So for the land transfer fee at the 2%, that's fixed on the assessed value of the property. The stamp duty, 0.5%, is on the selling price. And so is the business tax at 3.3%. But understand these two taxes are mutually exclusive. One applies and the other doesn't. And finally, withholding tax is based on the assessed value, not the sale price. So whatever the land department says your house is worth, they apply their formulas and they will come out with the tax. One consideration that affects a number of things is how long you've owned the property. If you've owned it less than five years, it's not your primary residence, then business tax applies. If it is your primary residence, for longer than 12 months, or you've owned it for more than five years, then it doesn't apply, in which case we're applying the stamp duty and not the business tax. How does it all come together? What are the possible taxes? What are they based on? And when do they apply? Let's take a look. The land transfer fee, 2%, is based on the assessed value and it always applies. The stamp duty is 0.5% based on the sale value, and applies only when there's no business tax applied. The business tax is 3.3% of the sale value and only applies if it's your primary residence for less than a year or you have not held it for five years. 
the withholding tax is based on the assessed value and it always applies. So now that we know this and we're armed with all this information, let's do a little case study. Suppose that you have a property, it's being sold for 10 million. The land department assesses it at 5 million. And you want to fudge the sale price to call it 8 million, right? What happens? So our land transfer fee, 2%, is based on the assessed value. 2% of 5 million will be 100,000 baht that you need to pay. The stamp duty is half a percent and it's based on the sell value. So in that case, it's half a percent of 10 million. That will be 50,000 baht. The, in our case, we've said you've owned it long enough, so the business tax doesn't apply, so we're not applying it. Withholding tax is based on this assessed value, 195,000 baht. Now, if we, we fudged out the 10 million and went for 8 million, what do we see here? We see that the land transfer fee doesn't change. The stamp duty went down by 10,000 baht, which is about 300 US dollars. This business tax doesn't change and withholding tax doesn't change. So in this case, our net gain 10,000 baht or $300, 300 euros. So what are the takeaways from this deep dive into taxes? There's zero impact on the transfer fee and the withholding tax components. These are based on the assessed value and no matter what you declare as a sale value, the assessed value will not change. When specific business tax doesn't apply, the difference in fudging a million or two million is nominal, 5,000, 150 to 300 dollars. And if you say, how do I avoid paying so much business tax? The simple way is to register yourself uh, in the primary residence or hold on to it if more than five years. Many people hold on to the property for more, five, for more than five years. We need to understand that when you make a false declaration to a Thai official, that is a criminal offense. So when you go to the land department and you say, I sold it for 8 million, like in our case study, that is a criminal offense. If you're a foreigner and you do get convicted of a criminal offense, you can be blacklisted from Thailand or even worse, sentenced to a Thai jail for a number of years. My feeling is, you know, we're talking maybe $150, $300 is just not worth playing with the numbers. Because when you take that deep dive inside, you're not saving tax on everything. You can only save tax on a very small slice by changing the selling price, because the selling price doesn't apply for two of the standard taxes. So I hope this gave you some insights into how the taxes work. I know taxes aren't the most exciting thing, but people are often scheming of how to save some tax. And even if your seller is, you're the buyer and the seller's asking you to do this, you certainly don't want to be complicit. You know, what's the chance of going to jail? Probably not super high unless there's something else that you've done to irritate them but I think they're quite happy to blacklist you and you wouldn't be able to come into Thailand. That could be a temporary blacklisting or a long-term blacklisting. All in all, I say it's not worth it. Proper management and planning are key to making sure that your taxes are minimized. Thank you for watching this time. Thank you for watching all the way through. I'm Joe Remax and please like and subscribe if you can. That's a great help to the channel. Until next time, I'll be seeing you on the next video. Thanks for watching.